when you drive the car, it's so low to the ground that you feel like you're going a thousand miles an hour, uh, even though you're only actually topping out at about 120 kilometers an hour. But you're so close to the ground that uh, you're going, you feel like you're going so fast. You're going around really small tracks as well, so that helps. That makes you feel going even faster. Uh, and you're kind of always pushing the limits. You're always trying to go faster, uh, all while trying to listen to what the car is telling you, uh, as well as try to control the car, trying to stay on the limit. Uh, yeah. So we are the team puts in a lot of precautions um, when designing a track, when setting up the track, when having people around the track as well. So when we're out of track, for example, the tracks are designed so that in any runoff areas, it's kind of more of an open space. There's not really any room to actually hit a curb or a lamppost or something like that. We kind of design the tracks so that we, a little bit more around the open space. Uh, we have marshals at certain points around the track with fire extinguishers so that in the event of a fire, uh, people are ready right away uh, to signal to you that car's on fire if it were to ever happen and run to your safety. Uh, but when you're actually driving the car, you're not really focused on that because of all the preparation we've done beforehand, because we have a lot of trust in our team and you're really just focused on driving and going fast. So before a race, usually we'll look over data. So we'll make sure, okay, what kind of bumps will we see on the road? Then with that data, we'll be able to then go to our, what we call our uh, tuning sheet. And off of that, we'll be like, okay, I need to tune my dampers such that they have this response rate or my springs such that they're this stiffness, such that the car is maximized for these track conditions. So the main uh, reason as to why suspension is important is that the only uh, interaction that there is between the car and the road is the tires. And suspension basically enables the tires to have as much grip as possible with the road. If we were to, let's say, not have any suspension, then the car would just skid all over the place. So we're really here to just make sure that the car performs to its best. So teamwork is extremely important, especially when it comes with this car. Uh, the reason being is, you know, everybody's a student. And so we all ha already have, you know, 40 hour, uh, you know, study sessions or study weeks. And so on top of that, we now have to put in, you know, 20 hours a week on top of this car. So there's no way that a single human could design the whole car on their own. So we definitely need, you know, everybody doing their own task and make sure that we have strong teamwork to get something out of it. Uh, well, first thing we do is we always check the rules. We have to make sure that everything is rules compliant. Uh, but then we will evaluate different designs uh, based off of uh, data simulations. Uh, particularly looking at frame, we do some force equivalency testing uh, and torsional stiffness testing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting because everything needs to be integrated. Uh, so while you may not have a particular interest on chassis or aerodynamics, uh, it is very important that you un understand those systems uh, and how they could integrate into yours uh, because in the end, everything needs to work together as a package. So without business, I would say a lot of the different aspects of the car would run. We help manage, like for, first and foremost, the cost of the car. So make sure you have enough money to acquire parts because we can't run the car if we can't have the parts to build it, but also helping with promotion and media because we would like to make sure that our name and reputation is withheld within the community and reaches new sponsors, students, and or just people in the community who, just wants, who are passionate about racing sports. So making sure that the team survives long-term, I think is one of the important factors of business. So every year we meet with all the different systems. So for example, Aero, we would meet with the aerodynamic system to see what kind of materials and design choices that they're interested in making this year to assess whether we have the costs, have the money on hand to help them. If not, then we identify the gaps through our budgeting and figure out how can we potentially cover these gaps. And then we can assess there whether it's feasible to cover, for example, a 5K gap within the season. And then we do that for each system and total, total it all together then that's how we make our overall season budget. And then throughout the season, we complete expense forms, we keep track of the costs that we incur, just to see how we're going along with our budget. I've gotten to see that we have like a lot of young members starting out right now, but essentially it's like you're, you're teaching them sort of the basics of electronics. So a lot of people don't necessarily come on with a, a skill set that they can start contributing with. So a lot of it is um, we do uh, pr printed circuit board designs, so, so PCBs. Essentially what we're doing is we're starting them from the basics, like, okay, this is the building block. This is like the schematic, so like the blueprint. And then you actually go and you create the board and then you have to put everything on the board. But this is all like a skill set we're not taught in school. So a lot of the aspects as a lead is sort of managing, okay, how do you do the design aspect? 
but then also how do you do the, the process to actually create it? And it's um, helping them if they have questions or even um, if they have like the things that are uncertain about, like how do I go about designing this? Then it's sort of giving them somewhere to start so they know uh, essentially how to build their tool set so that they can become like full-fledged, like independent members, ideally. So this year, uh, we actually made the design finals and we were told by the judges that that's the best aerodynamics presentation they've seen by far. And the biggest achievement was for me to learn from my mentor, our ex-aero lead, Daniel Ingraselli, who currently works at Red Bull Racing as an aerodynamicist. And I think making the design finals in over a decade, after a decade, is a huge achievement. And our aero package, for example, this is the first year we've introduced an under tray and rear diffuser that we've never had in the past 50 years we've been running. So I think that's a huge achievement coming, making, and also implementing. So the importance of teamwork is making sure that everyone is treated equally and also has a voice. Because at the end of the day, if you come across a lot of experienced members, it's possible that the new members feel intimidated or they don't feel validated. So in teamwork, what our main goal is to mentor the new students, first year, second years, for example, and give them a voice, value their opinions as well. And in terms of communicating with other sub teams, we use a platform called Slack and we make sure that we go to our general meeting where all subsystems give updates. But at the same time, we message each other, we have threads within Slack and we make sure that everything is collaborated and we have some threads that are called collaboration. So some weeks we collaborate with the front wing, some weeks we collaborate with the rear wing because at the end of the day, everything comes together and affects every system. So for Formula SAE, I've always been a very passionate F1 fan. So getting to actually be on the other side and design a car is just a dream come true. And how it's helped me personally is to balance like school work as well as um, teamwork. And it's really made me grow as a person and learn how to do better research, applied research, because we not only study different methods and designs, but also do manufacturing and do composites research, for example. So that's how I believe it's helped me become a better team player, but also a better applied researcher. It's taught me a lot of interdisciplinary school skills, for example, just soft skills you can work with other people, learning to work with people who've come from different degrees or different backgrounds, because personally I'm pursuing more of a typical accountant role, but this team has given me the opportunity to work with people who have been fully engineers or they've done more mechanical or electrical stuff, so knowing how to work with them and like come together with different ideas to create something better, I think that's one of the best things I've learned. Honestly, uh, I can't think of anywhere where I've learned more than working on a Formula SE team. Uh, I can pretty much talk to everyone, all the other interviewers, they'll tell you the exact same thing. We've learned more here than anything in school. Um, met a lot of great people, uh, definitely opened up a lot of doors for me, uh, things that wouldn't be open to me if I hadn't joined. So in terms of personal growth, I'd say this team has definitely taught me a very strong work ethic. Um, you know, a lot of late night, uh, like 2 a.m. work sessions. The university is kind of our biggest supporter for the team. Um, so there are several engineering organizations within the university. Um, and also the university helps us provide by providing all the spaces we need. Um, so we have our team bay, uh, we have our machine shop, uh, we have all the certified uh, technicians that are kind of working with us as well. Um, so the university plays a very large role in helping keep the team alive. Um, it's also helped me a lot with my job interviews, getting jobs. Um, so it's helped me put a lot of useful stuff on my resume. It's taught me a lot of skills uh, from manual work to manual machining, uh, to designing, to analysis, to doing like finite element analysis, for example. Um, so it's taught me a lot of the core engineering principles. It's allowed me to uh, apply a lot of what I'm learning in class in a real world setting, um, which is a lot what jobs are looking for, um, especially co-ops when you're kind of younger, they're really looking for real life experience. Um, so that's helped me a lot in that department.